Hey guys, so I want to share with you our cargo trailer that we converted into a travel trailer and it's up for sale. Uh, so we bought this trailer back in 2020 and this was built in 2020. So what I want to do is kind of share with you guys, just kind of do a quick walk around um, and so on the outside, the inside, and we'll talk a little more about the plumbing as far as the water and um, where it collects that water, electricity and that kind of stuff. So, um, so we tow this basically with all of our rigs. We have a Jeep, a Range Rover, and our minivan, uh, it tows super easy. It's a single axle. It weighs about 1,400 pounds um, dry with the uh, fully loaded right now. When we when we go camping, it's about just over 2,000 pounds. Okay, so uh, we got spare tires here. Now, everything on this trailer is really brand new. We hardly ever use this. I would say maybe uh, less than a dozen times for day trips. We primarily use this for our surfing rig on the beach. So we park on the road, whatever. We got a surfboard and we come in here for lunch, read a book, take a nap, go surfing and whatnot. We've taken a few times overnight camping uh, using all of our, you know, our generator or short power plug-in and everything works great. Our main focus when we built this trailer was the idea that you guys can go camping without having to rely on shore power. and um, But we didn't want to do solar either because there's no good solar system out there that can uh, really charge up the batteries efficiently uh, and, and being cost effective. So solar did not make sense at all. And I don't know any solar solar panels that can charge you know banks of battery um, in a reasonable time. So this whole thing basically runs off of our Honda generator. Uh, it runs about six to eight hours on a uh, with our generator and might vary from yours but we will definitely include our generator if you guys are interested in buying this all right so we'll do a quick walk through here uh spare tire all the electricals whatnot this is really nice to keep all the rocks you know from hitting your your trailer but we don't need to worry about it because we don't have big tires you know banging on banging up or kicking rocks into the trailer I did this, yeah, that's me. <laughs> or my bike rack kind of sits up like this. Uh, when I made a turn, the actual handle of my bike kind of scraped across here. So lesson learned, I fixed my bike rack so I won't do that anymore. So yeah, uh, let me show you guys the tag on here. So this is was built in, hope you guys can see this. Let me focus in, uh, back in 8, 13 of 2020, uh, we bought this, um, I want you to bought this um, like in 2021 because uh, we that was during the, the peak of the COVID. We wanted a you know COVID project, and so that's why we bought this. It's made by Interstate, and there's all the stickers, whatever that's required. Oh yeah, here we go. So it is 1,400 pounds, okay, dry, and then of course we added additional 500 pounds to this easily about. 600 pounds total with water. The paint is in perfect condition. It's got a round top, LED lights all the way around. Uh, it's a it's a one piece top design, so you don't have to worry about leaking. Uh, we didn't put any holes on top either uh, intentionally because that's one of the main problems with these trailers is that they leak. And once you put holes in it, it's gonna leak. So let me start right here. This is our ventilation for our AC and our heater. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. We got our marker lights over the fender well. And this is, um, again, it's brand new. You know, you can, all, the tire still has all these little nubs on the on the tires. Um, if, if the thing is still shiny and glossy, it's beautiful. Uh, this is our 30 amp electrical. We'll talk more about that. Right now it's plugged into my garage. Another electrical for the garage. I just need to put my license, license plate on there. Oh yeah, so this is a, this has a permanent California uh, trailer tag so you don't ever have to register it register it again uh, versus a travel trailer you got to register it I believe every two years okay this is the back and then we'll come back to this in a little bit okay so moving on to the entry uh, we the only window that we put in here is this door window and that's primarily because we want to keep this trailer incognito so when we go to uh, wherever Monterey you know um, San Diego we want to be able to park this wherever just to kind of tow with us and not 
make it stand out like, oh, this is a travel trailer conversion. We just want to make it look like a travel, uh, I'm sorry, a utility trailer so that the police and, you know, whoever don't question what this is because uh, depending, on, depending on where you go, um, they don't allow you to park overnight with a trailer, not alone sleep in your trailer or your vehicle. So we want to keep this very down low and keep it very simple. The more windows you put in here, the more they're gonna bother you if you happen to park on the side of the road somewhere like in Monterey or San Diego or things like that, okay? So we got one window that slides up and down with the ventilation. Um, it, it, we had to modify this entry uh, lock right here. We got rid of the main locking system that goes right here because uh, I mean, I'm not saying that somebody will, but they could potentially lock you in if you if you were to make, retain the original, the hinge system. So we got rid of the hinge. We kept this because it's kind of nice, you know, um, burly handle for you to hold on to if you need something to hold on to. Uh, but we just replaced it with with a conventional travel trailer uh, door door system. Okay, uh, we put in a 110 outlet out here that's got a GFI switch in case you short sell. We have a night light out here. Okay, let's jump in here real quick. And it's got a little latch right here. So, you know, you know if you wanna swing the door open and hold it open on a windy day, you can do that. There you go. And not worry about the door slamming into you because this thing is really heavy. And so when I put the window in, I just didn't, I didn't paint this at all. So I just need to come back here and paint it up for you guys. That's easy to do. And let's go ahead and jump into the trailer. Okay, so let me give you guys just a quick little pan here. These is, that's our seating benches. And also holds us, uh, we use it for storage. We have one light in the trailer. I am gonna put in a, a 12 volt. So this is runs off of a 110. So whether it's a generator or shore power, that's how this is powered. But I am gonna put in one light in here that's a 12 volt. So that will be in. Uh, once you guys, if you guys want to buy this, it'll be there for you. Okay, uh, this is for our surfboard. And everything here is still original. We didn't, we didn't uh, Frankenstein this thing. We kept everything exposed, including our electrical. Uh, plumbing is all out there in the front for you guys to see. Uh, that way if something goes wrong, then it's easy to replace or fix. Super easy. And that was our really our main intention of this trailer is that if somebody or ourselves want to change something down the road, uh, we can do that without having, having to rip the wall out, you know, for electrical and things like that. So this is a modified full-size bed. Uh, a full-size bed, I believe, is seven feet long, and this is actually six feet long. So this is a 10-inch memory foam. We just had to cut that. My wife and I and my daughter sleep on top here uh, and super cozy. Um, I'm five foot nine and a half, five ten, and I have no problem sleeping up there whatsoever. Uh, and then we have a smaller bed down below here, and then down on the bottom we have this hinge uh, wall, so you can swing this thing out that way. And if you if you want to put in a like a long uh, surfboard or you know stand a paddleboard or lumber whatever, you can do that. So we made us again super versatile. The, the bedding system is is uh, using this e track system. Uh, these clips where your two by four runs into, these things pop right out. A little clip, you just push down and these things pop right out. So if you don't like the configuration or you want the bed a little bit bigger or you want to drop it down lower, you guys can do that. Again, it's super simple to uh, modify however you want it, okay? And this is um, our daughter's bed right here. That was the whole intention was for, you know, my little daughter to sleep down here. Um, under this bed, there's a storage for whatever. And there's our permanent license plate right there. All right, so moving on, we got um, these cabinets. Uh, we got this at HD Supply, and this they were the only one that sold solid wood cabinet, surprisingly. Everything else uh, at Home Depot, Lowe's, were all MDF. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, when you're going down the road, we don't want the MDF to fall apart. So when you guys are looking for trailers, like all travel trailers you see um, on the showroom floors, most of them are MDF and they fall apart after a very short period of time. This is all solid wood. Uh, these are self-closing drawers as well. So when you hit a bump, they're not gonna come out. They're secured in there really well. Uh, this is a Magic Chef refrigerator. This is like a 41 cubic 
uh, inch, something like that. It's good size. Uh, we can put all of our food in here for the weekend or long weekend, no problem. It'll actually, um, it, the freezer gets really cold, so you can make ice. It has an ice tray. Uh, this is a butcher block we bought at Home Depot, like an inch and a half butching block. Uh, we just cut it down to, to length and width. And this is uh, actually floating on top of this uh, half inch or three quarter inch plywood. So we didn't want to make this permanent. Again, if you don't like this or you want to change something up down the road, we didn't want you to have to destroy this whole thing to make you know a little change. Uh, this, this is held down by four screws. There's one here and one up there and two under the sink. Uh, and then this whole thing pops right up, okay? And you can take this whole thing out with the faucet and the sink already in place. So we made it so, it's, so that it's super easy for you to modify. Okay, let's talk about plumbing here. So we have a 12 volt uh, water pump right here. Um, and I got a small, like a motorcycle 12 volt battery sitting behind this AC, our AC and heater unit. We have a five gallon jug of clean water and five gallon jug of, you know, waste water that comes down from the sink. So there's a hose in here that connects to the uh, bottom of the drain. Um, when you turn the water on there, the water just comes out automatically. So, uh, and then back here, you got some electrical plugins. And you can see that's where we got the AC and heater plugged in right there. Uh, the other plug-in is for the, we got a trickle charger. Let me move this out of the way here. We got a trickle charger right here. Uh, this actually powers our, or charges the, the, the little 12 volt battery. So it'll run the, um, primarily just the, the water. But I'm gonna run also a 12 volt light in here somewhere so you guys can have um, light in here if you don't have shore power so i think that would be handy so this is our black and decker black and decker heater and ac all unit all in one and what i did here is um let me just show you guys i cut out a vent right here so we got fresh air coming into the uh ac unit and then i put a latch i found these little hinge latch online and so you can flip this down and then all your heat and, and air comes out right here. And it does a really amazing job of cooling down or warming you up. It's not too bad. Um, but on really cold days, we have a secondary DeLong oil filled uh, heater up there and that thing rocks it. You'll be toasty in here. Uh, this the AC unit, it runs off of a remote. Right now it's turned off, but everything works here, beautiful. And we'll show you all of that when you guys get here and how all that works and operates. Okay, so that's a cool little concept there rather than having it, you know, plumbed out here somewhere. Um, again, if you ever need to service that AC unit, you can just pull it out by taking this thing out, completely out, and pulling the AC unit up and over this cabinet and then outside. Okay, um, it does have a, a CO2 and carbon monoxide sensor right here. Um, Let's see what else can I tell you guys. Oh, let's go. Let's talk about the electrical real quick here. So again, um, everything runs off of our our small Honda generator, and we have a 30 amp box behind under the the bed that basically runs on top of you know through the ceiling here and the side of the wall. And reason why we left it up here exposed is because uh, again, if you ever want to make any changes, it's right here and right here and right there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and that I need to paint this right here. Uh, so yeah, it's all exposed. So again, you guys can make real quick uh, adjustments, changes on the fly without having to tear the wall apart. All right, and a little thermostat. It's a hot day here in Sacramento. All right, so let's go around the back here. We'll talk a little bit more about the cargo area. Um, so it does have a rear backup camera. Uh, it's a wireless backup camera. So you can have a little screen on the inside of your vehicle to see what's going on behind you. Uh, this is our 30 amp box. Uh, one is the dedicated for the AC unit and the other one's for the refrigerator. The refrigerator one runs all of the power, but the one, we got a 15 amp going right to the AC unit so that it doesn't, you know, circuit doesn't break or whatever it also makes um running this with a with our air compressor i'm sorry 
It also makes this uh, running our generator with this thing super easy and it runs efficiently and it's beautiful. It's about 30 inches from that wall to the edge of here. And it's got a ton of cargo space. Um, this is pretty much what we pack when we go you know, camping, not too much. Uh, we have our camping stove in here at the table. Oh, we don't have chairs in here uh, at the moment, but yeah. And then if you want to bring some extra gas, you can, but we oftentimes fill up, um, you know, put gas in the generator when we get to get to our, our destination. Um, but yeah, whatever you guys think you, you need in here, it'll fit right in here. So there you go. Um, again, this trailer is in beautiful condition. There's no rust. It's <laughs> brand new. Uh, we just took, we were bored during COVID and we thought, oh, let's do a project. So all of this is documented on our YouTube channel. If you guys want to go check it out, I'll leave a down, link down below so you guys can go check out our YouTube channel documenting the build for our um, cargo trailer conversion. All right. So there you go. Hope you guys uh, found this to be helpful. If you have any comments or questions, uh, let me know and we'll get back to you. Thanks.